So, David, welcome to the Mr. Beacon podcast. Hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, so, in this show, we try and give people insights into all the different aspects of digital to physical convergence. And we spend a lot of time talking to people that make beacons and gateways and cloud software and so forth. But you know, where I see the, uh, the future, and I've voted with my, my feet in terms of joining uh, Willia, is this use of the label uh, to join the digital and physical worlds. And of course, you can do that in a number of ways. Williot is very focused on battery-free Bluetooth and tiny uh, printed battery tags as a secondary option. Um, and But then, of course, there's NFC, RFID, QR codes. And Tadbic has a role in all of those. And you guys are what some people would describe as converters. And I remember... When I first started at Williot and we started looking at, hey, is there some way of getting Bluetooth into a label? And we came across converters. I had no idea what converters were. So can, you, can we start this off by explaining a bit about what a converter is? And then we'll talk a bit about Tadbic and, uh, and what you do and how you do it and some of the things that you do that are different to a traditional converter. But imagine I've just arrived in this ecosystem uh, from Mars uh, what, what is a converter? Well, um, basically a converter is um, um, a manufacturer that um, know how to turn materials, different type of material, plastic material, paper materials, into a label with some um, smartness or um, with some intelligence uh, in it. And that intelligence, of course, is coming... Uh, from uh, a connection between a chip and antenna on any type of surface. And if um, mm -hmm. a converter know how to take that, to put it and encode it, uh, encode it into um, in a special way uh, and add some, uh, um, of course, adhesive to it, so that that can um, deliver information seamlessly. So if life was simple, there would be one label, you could put it on everything, and that would be great. But the reality is that's not the case. What are some of the complexities that you have to deal with as a converter? What makes one customer different from another? Actually, um, just think about the different items that every customer has. Not every one of them wants just to take boxes. And even a box is not just a box because it can be made from different materials. And I would say that there are three main things that make every single um, RFID inquiry very special. Um, first of all, it's, it's the question of which materials are the items that we want to tag because they need to be recognized. So... Every materials react, of course, by physic um, differently to um, RF signals. So a glass is transmitting RF or blocking RF better or worse than paper or metal. So um, first of all, you have to analyze what um, type of material you have in front of you to find the right label. This is already... Um, distinguishing uh, a lot between the one label and the other, the one project and the other. Um, the second level, of course, um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's what are the expectations of the customer in, in, uh, on, on read performance, on how, do, uh, how far do I, I, I want to reach, mainly in the RFID world. In the NFC world, it's a little bit different because it's a near field communication, but in the UHF RFID, I'm expecting already to have a couple of meter and not only a couple of meters distance. I also have sometimes in a bulk uh, the wish to have that also going through a gate in a certain speed. So how do I get the best performance out of my um, label uh, on the items that I want to tag? And it has to do by nature with the size of the antenna as much as the sensitivity of a tag. 
uh, the better the sensitivity and the larger the antenna. So I will just get a better read distance. So it's varied mm -hmm. between 50 centimeter up to 20 meters uh, in, um, in, in that technology. And let's not forget, um, Steve, we're speaking about battery free technology. Okay, we didn't get into that battery assisted. We didn't get into anything mm -hmm. which with assist uh, with the assistance of more energy to get better distance. Uh, and 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 last but not least, of course, um, every customer uh, has um, his very unique situation on on the product. Sometimes we um, we have customers that they just want to have a very um, durable face of the um, of the label, so that when you're working with a forklift, and even if such a label is going to get hurt, that it won't that it will continue working. Other is saying, "Oh no, no, that's not so important. I just put it on my boxes, and I just want to have it with a simple paper." So between paper mm -hmm. and in mold technologies, you will find an entire scale on uh, solutions. Uh, that need to be uh, um, considered uh, to find the right uh, to find the right uh, solution for customers' inquiry. And can you explain what in mold is? You, you use that term. In mold is is, is very very simple. Um, all the aspects of um, injection, plastic injection, or uh, uh, polyurethane injection uh, into a form to create um, a box. Simple, simple carrier, simple crate uh, is, mm. is, is based on injection technology. And um, that in mold means that I'm adding, not with an adhesive, I'm making just part of the uh, box material. I'm, I'm using that as the <clears throat> connection to my um, um, wireless technology. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, so uh, that, so in, um, not instead of a sticker, you actually have the the tag built into the uh, the material of the of 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 the label or the box. Absolutely. With with all the with all with all the complexity uh, of again considering which materials I'm using for that uh, 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 for that for that injection, um, some materials has metal inside, and that of course need to be considered because metal is RF unfriendly. So it's a complex world. You do it's like a Rubik's cube because I'm assuming you're dealing with marketing people and your customers who uh, care about aesthetics. You're dealing with industrial engineers who are looking at uh, production uh, processes. There's the kind of the uh, the, the the business a a aspect as well. Um, so you must what sort of disciplines do you have to have in your company to solve this Rubik's Cube? Um, first of all, um, I, I think you, you need to be to understand a lot from um, materials on one hand and RF technology on the other hand. I think those are the main, the main subject you need to um, bring with you if you want to start conversion. And then, of course... Um, um, it's, it's, it's a question of um, how well uh, you are able to understand and, and to go together with your customer in his processes, because every process um, will create uh, a, a, different, a different risks or different uh, constraints uh, for your uh, label development. Just think about it that... Um, it's, it's a total different solution when I'm using uh, um, an RFID label or a label, a smart label, uh, where it's in with my warehouse or labels that I need to use outside of my warehouse where it might rain or it might snow or might be very hot. And those will, of course, even though it's the same box, um, will require totally different handling of materials. So I can see there might be some situations where you're basically shipping reels of labels to uh to a company i know you supply one of the big uh, pharmacies in uh here in the u.s and they're just price labels so relatively to me it seems relatively simple uh, integration you send them reels of labels but 
How do you deal with more complex packaging? I, I've seen you guys dealing with shrink wrap and so forth, and it seems like the I can't quite get my head around what role a converter has in when it comes to label application and you know in molding and uh, is the customer doing that or is there another entity that you work through how do you how do you orchestrate that uh, more complex scenario Tantpick itself orchestrate the whole thing um, as as one stop shop um, others are offering only consulting or consulting plus uh, um, on, on, on the shelf uh, uh, products. Um, others goes further than, than whatever we, um, we speak about. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's always the question, what is your domain? What is your focus? And um, how far are you willing um, to, um, to deal, and your R&D team, to deal with, uh, with, with, with such an inquiries? We also don't do everything. Uh, we don't mm-hmm. have um, a domain, for instance, uh, in very specialized on high temperature or on metal applications. <clears throat> there are companies like Omni ID, which bring much, much uh, more knowledge and much more, uh, more uh, um, understanding uh, in that yes. environment. But uh, in ev- all the environment which are um, around smart packaging, well, if it's for beverage, food, pharmaceutical, logistics, um, I, you know, airports, um, luggage, whatever. Um, I think that uh, due to the fact that uh, Tatbik is since 40 years handling uh, different type of um, raw materials and, and converting them and working with them uh, in, in different um, applications, that gave, gives Tatbik so much know-how that we can go along uh, um, with our customers a very, a very, very uh, uh, interesting way. And uh, I think um, with Willio, that was probably exactly the reason why Tatbik was such an, a, a good partner for that, because um, as you remember it, it, it to, find, to find the right coating uh, uh, for such a new technology, such an, a fantastic technology, was very uh, constrained. Just think about uh, blocking light, um, having a different type of uh, adhesive, and 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 seeing how they tune, how that type of material is detuning the tag. Uh, you know, uh, finding uh, which which materials can can uh, um, uh, reduce pressure on the tag, and so on and so on. At the end, the idea was uh, to get from every single pixel the best performance you can. And then put that in a machine that uh, produces um, 30 million attacks uh, uh, in, in half a year. That's, uh, that's, in a, that's, in a, that's in a different scale of capability. So taking that from development where you make basically handmade pieces to 30 million uh, um, streamlined production uh, and beyond, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely... Um, something that uh, demand um, flexibility and expertise, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you guys um, did more than just produce labels. Yeah. You've helped us design hardware, which uh, can be used for the testing and QA process. And uh, um, so this has been, you know, certainly very valuable for, for us. And the fact that you were headquartered within a, 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 a short uh, distance from uh, each other has been really helpful as well. So maybe we should um, do a proper introduction to Tadbik. Uh, how, how big are you? What's, what's, the, what's the history of the company? What, uh, what, what are the areas that you focus on? Well, Tadbik is a, is a family company um, established 40 years ago. Uh, with uh, one big uh, um, um, mission to um, help uh, uh, developing better packaging, smart packaging. We started with uh, basically just normal uh, label and uh, sleeves for um, um, the beverage and pharmaceutical industry and developed from there, basically uncovered everything between 
special applications up to um, just normal logistics labels. Um, uh, in the Tatbik group, you will find 1,000 people who are engaged uh, uh, for Tatbik, and those are spread on three continents in um, uh, three different uh, um, production sites uh, with seven factories and uh, 48 uh, countries happy customers. So uh, it's quite an interesting uh, um, mid-size uh, company for Israel, definitely the number one. Worldwide, um, Tatbik is um, significantly um, leading in, in area for in-mold technologies, and um, we are helping um, big companies uh, that are global, uh, like Nestle, like uh, Unilever, but uh, at the same time, uh, we are very, very um, keen and 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 um, um, eager to work also with the small startups in Israel uh, to help those uh, great ideas that uh, are being developed in that uh, environment uh, to make them big. And uh, whatever we can offer them, if it's our labs, if it's our expertise, if it's... Uh, um, the knowledge that we have in uh, in different um, areas, or even uh, goes up to our um, sales infrastructure worldwide, um, we are um, happy happy to share with them, and uh, and make and make that um, family feeling and that feeling of um, the power of one uh, real, mm -hmm. and that's also the logo the slogan of our company. We try. Um, Maybe just just uh, um, to quote the the, the um, our um, founder um, uh, um, mantra was uh, let's make the impossible possible. We certainly did with us, and uh, that uh, relationship uh, right from the early days is something that uh, I really appreciate. Let's um, put a bit more flesh on the bones in terms of how our two companies are, are working together. So you're. You're um, no stranger to NFC tags, RFID tags. Uh, you, you've worked closely with uh, Omni ID, where you came from. But um, uh, can you describe what you bring to market with respect to um, the the Williot Bluetooth technology? Well, in uh, if if I understand the question right, is uh, it's it's just about um, what do we do in the area of BLE? Uh, further mm -hmm. than um, uh, for Williot or including Williot. Well, actually, Williot made that great idea or developed that great a great product, great chip um, that um, is 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 using um, a standard or using Bluetooth uh, protocol. Um, and um, on one hand, and on the other hand, use battery free uh, technology. For um, uh, for creating um, uh, products or sensors that um, um, are solving different type of uh, problems that uh, or um, giving an answer to different applications that we were not able to fulfill like that. So mm -hmm. um, near that um, type of uh, BLE uh, um, development, we actually not uh, having anything comparable to that. But I think that um, there is, as such, almost uh, only the active BLE in the market that uh, is mm -hmm. compared to that. And that is a field that we don't, we don't go into. We try really to keep the magic of um, the battery-free concept and um, I, I would say 100% uh, or almost 100%, there is no never 100%, but uh, almost 100%, we are very much focused on battery-free uh, um, 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 technology. However, um, I didn't say 100% because for Williot, we did also a BAP de development, uh, which we are very, very mm -hmm. um, proud of. Battery-assisted uh, uh, version so, of, yeah. the, uh, of the product. So uh, basically, if a company is interested in... Uh, integrating battery-free Bluetooth technology into their packaging, they can come to Tadbic, 
And you guys have a lot of background, you know what works, what doesn't work, uh, what needs to be done to make things work. And you can provide tags and advise people on uh, the, the, the best process for applying and uh, um, association and testing and that sort of thing. Is that a reasonable mm. summary? Yeah, Steve, in, in one word, it's the holistic approach. We, we, we don't look at, at, at one aspect or at one challenge or at one uh, requirement that customer is giving us. It's always in the environment, in that ecosystem where that product needs to be integrated. So those that, that covers, of course, all the different aspects that you, of course, spoke about and far beyond. Um, that, uh, and, and we are very happy. Far beyond means also that if, if customers come to us and, and, and they want um, to speak about totally different type of technology, um, we are um, happily doing that with them. And, and we have a couple of very interesting examples for that. Hey, what are some of the use cases that uh, you find most exciting, most most interesting of this battery-free Bluetooth technology, given that you've got uh, this up-close experience with it? I think that it's fantastic to see what now happened just recently uh, with the use case of the grocery uh, chain in Israel in, in, in combination with the Willio tax. Um, I think... Uh, for the people who doesn't know the story, uh, they were trying every single different technology in the market before they really uh, agreed to, uh, to, to, to test uh, um, the Williot Pixel, which they re didn't really believe that something like this will, will work from the beginning. And at the end, um, we just see that uh, the use case is best valued by and, 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 and found the best uh, um, as a, as a best solution uh, with uh, uh, the BLE passive technology. Um, this is definitely one of the use cases which um, we think uh, it, it's, it's, it's target on disruptive technology. It's, it's target on something that change the um, way we look at our supply chain efficiency potential uh, totally different. It's not anymore, what can I do to solve a problem? It is really, how can I avoid getting into a situation which will create a problem? And um, in, uh, in, in the medicine world, it means, how can I keep myself healthy instead of taking mm -hmm. any, any pill to become healthy again? And I think that it's much more... Um, uh, interesting and for un for sure sustainable uh, for the entire industry. It doesn't matter if it's food, pharmaceutical, whatever. Yeah, I think we're we're sort of waking up to what we've got and what the disruptive uh, impact is of this technology. But you know, for for those who don't know, you were talking about Shufacell, which is Israel's largest retailer. There, right. grocery stores are everywhere, and that project was tracking plastic crates that are the, the vehicle, if you like, for produce, uh, whether it's tomatoes or zucchinis going from uh, the farm to the store. And, um, you know, as a, as a consumer, you're not, you sort of assume that everybody knows everything about that supply chain. But the reality is 99% of our supply chains are in the dark. We have just like uh, occasional glimpses as uh, uh, companies that are working to in, in, in automating those supply chains up until now, you haven't really known what's going on. And now with the kind of labeling technology that you enable and the, the chip and cloud that, uh, that Williot's providing, we can get continuous visibility throughout everything that's going on in the farm, in the packing shed, uh, from the packing shed through the distribution vehicles into the distribution center of the grocery store from the store. And uh, I'm not talking necessarily just about Shufaso. We've done a bunch of projects now that are like that. And what we've found is that the, you know, what you would hope uh, is happening is not always happening. The, the, you know, the reality of, of yeah. the route of produce from the soil 
to the shelf, from the <laughs> farm to the store, is not a, as direct as you'd want. And it's incredible how many anomalies, whether it's products being kept at too cold a temperature, too hot a temperature, uh, being left at the back of, uh, uh, of sheds. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the, you know, the reality is there's just been no scalable way of getting continuous real-time visibility of supply chains. And what we're talking about is essentially getting a godlike view of everything from its source to its destination. And, um, you know, the world's got on pretty well without that. But the, the, the opportunity we have to slash waste and, 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 you know, how many times have you bought strawberries at a supermarket, you get them home and they're bad or they go bad within half a day? Why is that? It's because Rather than taking two days to get from the farm to your uh, pantry, it, it took six days. And uh, uh, the only, you know, you don't, you don't satisfy, you don't solve that problem in batch mode. You, you do it by having real-time visibility. And the only way you can do that is with IoT connectivity, which is supplied down at the lowest level to the you know the, the the crates and ultimately to the primary packaging of the product and the only way that happens is if you combine amazing semiconductor design technology with the ability to put uh, a sensor that is the size of a postage stamp and costs tiny amounts relative to anything before but when you do that the possibilities to make things safer more efficient less waste Absolutely. I mean, it's transformational. And uh, I think I, we've been working for years now and you sort of, it's a bit like boiling the frog. You don't really notice what's happening around you. And then suddenly you realize, oh my goodness, this is not a small thing. This is changing the world, changing the world. Yes, I'm, 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 very, I'm very happy that uh, you, you, you speak about like that because I think that um, uh, there are... Um, there is one aspect that always just just hit me every time again when I'm thinking about it. When you look at the uh, Williot pixels, they it's the only tool that I know that helps you at the same time to discover a problem or to discover an inefficiency and will at the same use will reassure when that inefficiency has been gone. It will be to find the pill that will not only make you healthy, will also reassure that you are healthy. And usually, yes. every industry, it's totally two set type sets of tools or applications to measure and to um, uh, eliminate uh, or first of all, to discover, then to find this, to, to be able to find the source, to discover the problem, to find the source of the problem, to improve the problem, and then to get the assurance that this problem really um, is being um, corrected and, and, and it's not part anymore of your supply chain. And that for any time you want, you can reuse the same the same thing, the same single tool for all of these differences, also on a long term, uh, um, um, on a long, on lo long term process. Um, very, very interesting. Never saw it uh, something sim similar like that in any other technology. Uh, but um, it just show uh, that when you come to a point that um, you have the right hardware with a very, very intelligent software, and that combination can, can create an evolution. And to get to, you make a good point. It's, you know, in summary, it's, it's not just about analytics uh, and a dashboard that someone in management is seeing. It's about automation and driving interventions in real time in the supply chain. So the crates have been sitting for too long at the back of the shed and the FIFO, the first in first out systems stop becoming a FIFO, it's become a LIFO. And so you're 
it can spot that in real time, send a text message to the manager to alert that this issue is happening. The, the produce is in the, uh, in the container and the refrigeration unit's been turned off by the driver to save gas, uh, gasoline. That can be instantly uh, spotted and interventions can be triggered in real time. The crates have been delivered to the supermarket and they've been sitting on the supermarket floor for two hours when they should have gone from the cooler in the back to the, the cooler in the front. These are all the things that are causing food to get wasted, customers to be disappointed, um, and uh, it's just exciting that we can do that. And at, uh, you know, at a simple level, it's just that because Bluetooth is everywhere, we can get a continuous view of everything that's uh, going on. And because the RFID industry pioneered adding radios into paper labels and into packaging, we can take advantage of all of that. And it's, uh, it's been really cool working with uh, you and your colleagues to actually bring this to life. So David, where are you? I'm based in Germany in, um, in, a, in a beautiful city called Regensburg, which is uh, just between Munich and Nuremberg in the south part of Germany. And uh, how long have you lived in Germany? Well, since 1988, it makes almost 35 years now. Oh, wow. So, and what brought you over? Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Tel Aviv. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I, 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 I went to school there. Of course, I, I did my duty. And um, after university in Tel Aviv, I moved uh, because of my first wife to um, Germany. And I've stayed here since then. So... Uh, it's been a while. And, um, you know, what's the, is it, uh, it's interesting thinking about the different cultures, the uh, Israeli culture and the German culture. They're kind of different, aren't they? It must have been, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you see the differences and how's, how's it been in terms of uh, uh, adjusting? I guess part of what you bring to, Working for an Israeli company is this ability to translate between the cultures, right? Absolutely. Uh, I think the, the, the cultures are fundamental, uh, um, um, different from each other, um, uh, mainly, mainly about, you know, when, when um, uh, you can consider um, Germany or um, Central Europe as a, as a, as a, as a less, um, you know, um, I would just say a less emotional, more rational uh, um, type of, of of society and culture. Uh, it's uh, it's it it puts a lot of attention about uh, processes and make a lot of thoughts about um, how that living together uh, um, is uh, possible and um, mm -hmm. comfortable as possible. Uh, and of course, uh, last but not least, it's uh, it's of course it's a it's a very old tradition uh, um, society that learned perfectly mm -hmm. to live with each other and respect each other. So you have you have less conflict potential uh, compared to uh, societies that um, are in the Middle East. Yeah. So how did you get into this business where you are uh, now? Uh, what's what's your story? Well, my, my story is very simple, summarized in just one sentence. I did my hobby to my profession. Um, huh. and, and, and I was very lucky and probably I'm already um, uh, from the very f beginning of my career. I, I immediately jumped uh, already 1993 um, working in the IT industry, um, starting at, at Toshiba. Uh, where a laptop was still a mobile solution. And I went through six different evolutions in the, um, uh, in the, in the, in the IT industry, and I never did something else. And um, Germany is, uh, is a place where the industry is extremely uh, dominant uh, part of, uh, of, of, of the economy. And uh, therefore... Um, uh, the um, focus is, of course, of um, improving quality of supply chain. And here we are. Mm -hmm. um, 
whatever we do, uh, um, whatever I did in the past was uh, to add value, um, improving um, the main process of supply chain. And since it touched by the end, any each one of us, it doesn't matter where we are, it doesn't matter what we acquired, um, supply chain is the last nerve uh, that always meet us um, because we need the product to the right time, at the right place, to the, at the right condition, to the right price. And um, that's, uh, that's, that's actually the story of my career. And how did, uh, what was the, the uh, connection with Tadbeck? How did you find them? How did they find you? Well, uh, it's it's a it's a, it's a fantastic story. They were for since ninety uh, since two thousand fifteen, um, my best customer in Israel. Um, I was I was um, back at that time in, working for uh, Omni ID, and uh, Omni was uh, very well uh, respected and 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 appreciated worldwide for their developments mm-hmm. in the RFID business. And uh, Tatbik as a, as, a, as a converter and, and, and solution provider um, were uh, happily buying, um, of course, um, uh, my products uh, back at uh, Omni. So that was the first contact. And um, uh, we liked it, each other so much that at the end we decided to work together. So, and here we are. Very cool. And now your your colleagues are part of HID, right? Omni ID got uh, uh, merged into that organization. Absolutely, that happened last year. was uh, was a fantastic move, and um, uh, HID basically and and Omni ID went together, which I think uh, makes a, a lot of sense. HID was always one of the the most uh, or the largest uh, um, uh, one of the largest uh, integrators and partners of uh, of Omni. And to go together and to put that uh, portfolio together make a lot of sense. And um, yeah, I'm sure that they, 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 they did the right move. Absolutely, Steve. So we have this tradition on the show. We ask you for three songs that uh, um, are important to you. Um, some people get to think about this for a long time. I just <laughs> sprang it on you at the last minute. So yeah. what, did, what did you come up with in the last few seconds and why? Well, um, you know, the, I don't know why, but um, a, a song which is uh, really taking me since my, my childhood. And, and by the way, I, I, I love to play guitar. And this is one of, one of, one of the, oh. the sure, the sure uh, uh, songs. It's, uh, of course, Hotel California. Uh, All right. So... It, that that is something that I don't know. That probably in the next hundred years it will never get old. It's it always become more and more relevant. Uh, the more often I'm 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 listening to it. Uh, I totally agree. I grew up listening to that in England on my in my bedroom as a kid on the stereo, and it just gave me gave me this image of what it would be like living in California. It's uh, California does a good job of marketing itself. Most of the time, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I think that that's probably uh, the most well-known, I think, um, a song about California, where, which, which uh, mentioned California. As much as um, yeah. another song, which I really, really like and appreciate, is um, um, Alabama. It's uh, coming back uh-huh. to you. So um, uh, that's, uh, th- but that, that is, was more that, that energy, that, uh, that, that fun uh, of um, um, of 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 kind of the, that that American American vision, American dream. Uh, that um, yeah, something which is actually very much at the roots of America, uh, and still never got old. It's um, the best wine, which probably not only California can produce. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah, the heart of the country. Yes, absolutely. Other other than that, um, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, a lady um, called Etta James, and um, I always uh, oh. appreciated um, her text and her music. And I'm I'm not very sure if you ever uh, saw also um, the um, movie about her life, um, which calls, I haven't seen it. No, I have to look, at, look um, for it. It, it calls. Um, 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 a record, um, Cadillac record, 
um, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a film that has been made a couple of years ago, not only just about Etta, but she was playing there the major role. And um, um, yeah, and um, of course, um, uh, there are so, so many uh, um, uh, songs of her, which um, I just cannot stop hearing. And I'm speaking about the last 35 years, so. The only thing Amazing. I'm really, really sad about is, is of course, that I never saw her on stage, even though yeah. I was a couple of time in the US already a few years ago where she was still alive. But uh, oh, really? Yeah. I missed two things. I've missed Ray Charles back in the 90s, and I was oh. staying in a hotel where there was a live show of him in uh, 1997 in uh, Vegas, and uh, Etta James. She died. Oh, amazing. Who, 2018 or something yeah but very cool well thanks david appreciate it um it's been great to talk with you thanks for helping to educate us in terms of that role of the converter thanks for telling us a bit about uh um what tadbik is doing specifically i think you really have a first mover advantage uh, with respect to the the bluetooth technology and thanks for giving me uh a little bit of uh, an excuse to uh, uh, get excited about uh, what we're doing <laughs> together. Uh, uh, so uh, I've, I've really enjoyed the conversation. I, I, I just want to thank you for, for inviting me uh, to your show and uh, for having me. It's a great pleasure and um, keep on doing uh, what, you're, what you're doing. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of you Very and good. your podcast. <laughs> Thanks, David. You're most welcome. Thanks for watching this clip from the Mr. Beacon podcast here on YouTube. You can listen to this episode on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you enjoyed it, please like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe for more weekly videos. For more information about Williot and IoT Pixels, head on over to williot.com.